This is the day that God has created. Let us rejoice and be glad. And good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us online again today. I extend the love of Jesus to you today. Welcome to our worship where you and your spiritual journey are always welcome. Please join us as we start our time together with an opening song. body or spirit as we sing our opening song. It is simple and it is joyous Amen. and I need you to rejoice. We need a lot more rejoicing in our lives and a lot more rejoicing in the world. So let us rejoice together.
this time we share the peace of Christ and the way we do that in this time of physical distancing is by simply looking at whoever's in the room with you and saying, I love you. I You're love here you. with me today on the camera. I look you in the eye and I say, I love you. And I hope you're saying it back to me. I love you. I love you. <laughs> And may the peace of Christ be with all of you. Well, we're glad to have you with us and invite you to make your presence known by leaving a comment on our Facebook page or messaging or emailing Pastor Rich. For those in attendance in the building, please use the blue participation card found in the pocket in front of you and you can leave uh, it on the seat before leaving the building today. Uh, I give thanks and praise that during this time of pandemic, um, oops, page turn, uh, <laughs> pandemic, that we continue to be the church. And by the way, thank you for your support. Please continue your commitment of ties and offerings uh, to our faith community. Consider setting up an MCCQC monthly bill pay through your online banking, uh, which I found very convenient, uh, or mail your giving to the church office. Thank you for whatever you can do. Our offering plates are always full of people. Praise God. Amen. Please consider sending us your email so we can stay in touch with you and send weekly prayer lists and information and inspirations. Join us for our virtual social time that begins at noon today on Zoom. Uh, the meeting ID number has changed, so take note of that. Uh, the ID number is 816-0556-0383. PW763989. This is the information that will appear again at the slide at the end of our service today. Prayer is a very important part of our service here at MCCQC and the life of our church because our prayers aren't just for an hour on Sunday morning. They are throughout the week. And we appreciate you keeping up with uh, our prayers. And we'd love to have you be a part of that prayer list, whether it's for a request or a need or a praise or just to support the saints. So uh, please join us as we join together now in prayer. Lord of love, we praise you and thank you for you have wonderfully made us. Thank you for the showers that refresh and renew the face of the earth today. Send on the showers of your Holy Spirit to revive us again. Forgive us, God, for worshiping things instead of you. Remind us that you give us the power of love. May we have love in our hearts, love in our tongues, love in our hearing love in our sight, love felt in our bodies, love before us, and love behind us. Increase the love within us and our ability to express love to all those around us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And now, friends, here and at home, for what else shall we pray? Shall we pray? Thanks for the rain. Amen. Yes. My dad. Clay Davis. Aaron Toller. Yes, sir. Yes. Clement Fields. My brother Russ. Yes. Justin Lee. Or the one who thinks they least need it right now. 
for those thoughts, prayers that lie silent in our hearts. May your love and peace envelop and surround us. In your many names we pray. Amen. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now, the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now uh, than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in revealing and drunkenness, not in excessive indulgences of wickedness that hurts others, not in quarreling and jealousy. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able, and hear this good news reading from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Jesus said, If a member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, then Take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member still refuses to listen to them, then tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. <laughs> Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by our God in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the middle of them. And that's the power of love! <laughs>
power outage, the house was, was very dark, and so the paramedic asked Kathleen, a three-year-old girl, to hold a flashlight high over mommy so that he could see while he helped deliver her mommy's baby. Little Connor was born, and the paramedic lifted him by his feet and spanked him on his bottom, and he began to cry. And the paramedic then asked the wide-eyed three-year-old girl what she thought about all that that she had just witnessed. The three-year-old quickly responded, he shouldn't have crawled into that place in the first place. Spank him again. <laughs> I got a card from a friend yesterday. It said, I love you with all of my butt. <laughs> I'd say my heart, but it's not nearly as big. <laughs> I like this sentiment. That's the power of love. And that's our love jokes for today. Let us pray. Hmm. Holy One, we breathe in air in which we can still smell the fragrance of the rain. We breathe in your Holy Spirit that allows us to laugh, to exhale all the negatives, and to build us up in the power of love. Many years ago, there was a large statue of Christ with arms outstretched, erected high in the Andes on the border between Argentina and Chile. I'm sure many of you have seen pictures of the statue called Christ of the Andes. And the statue symbolizes a pledge between the two countries of Chile and Argentina that as long as it stands, there will be peace between the two nations. Ironically, shortly after the statue was erected, the Chileans began to protest that they had been slighted by the placement of the statue. The issue was that the statue had its back turned toward Chile. <laughs> Fortunately, just when tempers were at their highest in Chile, a Chilean newspaper man saved the day in an editorial that not only satisfied the people, but also made them laugh, he said, the people of Argentina need more watching over than the Chileans. <laughs> Would that we could let go of things as easily as that and come up with the, the right quip to disarm our enemies and sometimes our friends. The lyrics to the song, Wake Me Up, by Avicii could surely have been written expressly for us during this time of COVID. The lyrics are about living a dream and waking up to realize a new and better reality. The video suggests that we all need to leave behind those places and people who don't accept us for who we are in order to embrace new people and new places where we are loved and where we do fit in. This is what it means to live true to ourselves, to live within the power of the love of God, the unconditional love of Jesus that lets us be who we are. The music video depicts a foreign woman and a young girl living in a small, bland town in which the local townspeople look at the foreign woman and her little girl with disdain and disapproval. And they are not loved and accepted for who they are. The disapproving town is depicted in black and white. But one night, the woman rides a horse to the city in which she experiences love and joy and acceptance there among the young people attending an Avicii concert, incidentally. So they dance and they enjoy one another. And afterwards, she rides back to retrieve the child, and they move to that city in full color where the local townspeople are left staring at them, and they move fully into the power of love. That's the power of love. It transforms us. Sometimes it requires us to move 
to move us from places of estrangement to places of joy and promise. Here's the lyrics. Guided by a beating heart, I can't tell where the journey will end, but I know where to start. They tell me I'm too young to understand. They say I'm caught up in a dream. Well, life will pass me by if I don't open my eyes, and that's fine by me, so wake me up when it's all over, when I'm wiser and I'm older. All this time I was finding myself and I didn't know I was even lost. So wake me up when it's all over, when I'm wiser and when I'm older. All this time I was finding myself and I didn't know I was lost. I tried carrying the weight of the world, but I only have two hands. Now here's my chance to travel the world, but I don't have any plans. Wish that I could stay forever this young, not afraid to close my eyes. Life's a game made for everyone, and love is the prize. So wake me up when it's all over, when I'm wiser and I'm older. All this time I was finding myself, and I didn't know I was lost. How about you? Have you felt a little bit lost lately? Have you lost sight of your dreams? Have you lost sight of the possibilities of who you are and who you are meant to be in relationship to one another? Because that's the power of love. Avicii's video and Paul's message in our reading today are the same. We are called to love each other. We were created to dance the dance of life with each other in joy and in harmonious difference. That's the power of love. When we don't, then life becomes drab, like that black and white first part of the video. Everyone looks the same, and our judgments become black and white, and our existence becomes dark and colorless. Paul says, time to wake up. Wake up and put on Christ. To put on the armor of light. Living in the light for Paul suggests not only authentic authenticity and transparency, but living color, living truth, seeing each other for who we are and accepting each other in love. And Christ is that light. I want to challenge you today. If there's somebody you've been having a little problem with, I want you to write down all of their good qualities. And then say a prayer to love them and accept them for who they are. I know, you might have to dig a little to come up with some of those qualities. But do that. And pray for them, for their best selves to come forward and begin to love whatever is good that you see in that person. And watch what a difference it will make. For many of you, that's exactly what you need to do with your inner self. You need to tell yourself, recognize in yourself, all those wonderful, wonderful good qualities that you have, and begin to love yourself. To treat each other with disrespect, is to hide in the darkness and to cover up our own biases. When we disrespect someone, it says more about us than it does about them. To honorably live as in the day is to put jealousy and envy and quarreling aside and to treat each other with that power of love. Paul realized that in order to create a true church, people need to be bound together in harmonious and I think that's a wonderful description of the church. That's how the church is supposed to be. People bound together in harmonious difference. You see, the fact that we all love the Lord doesn't make us all the same. Deb's still going to disagree with me sometimes. Darn her. And it's okay. Right? The early church was a new blend of all kinds of people, Jews and Gentiles, Greeks and foreigners. They were very different. 
people coming from diverse cultures and practices, and the only thing binding them together was their belief in Jesus and the faith in God's powerful message of love. And that's what we have. Like Jesus, Paul sums up all of the commandments of God with this simple line, love one another. If you do that, none of the sins matter. Mistakes don't matter. Our love, God's love through you, takes care of all of the rest of it. When we put on Christ so that the light of Christ's love becomes like a mantle over us and within us, then we can't help but speak and act in love towards everyone around us. Not that we become perfect, but when we are immersed in that love, we become better people, and it becomes easier to practice love. It becomes easier to see the good in that one that's rubbing us the wrong way. To wake up is to come out of the dark place where we've been living, not even knowing that we were in the dark and into the new light of Christ's truth and powerful love that changes us, that influences us toward harmonious living. And let me tell you, it takes a lot less energy to live harmoniously than it does to live in rancor, than it does to live in anger, than it does to live in chaos. I know so many people that live in chaos. They live in drama, drama, drama. And I think, oh my God, that's got to be so exhausting. Aren't you tired of it? If you're tired of living in the drama, of living in the chaos, of living in the disruptions, find the harmony. Find the harmony. Find the gratefulness in whatever's happening in your life. It doesn't make everything magically wonderful, but it allows you to surf, as I say. <laughs> you know, you surf. There's high points and there's low points, but you're still on the board and you're surfing. And you got a smile on your face and love in your heart. That makes all the difference in the world. When Jesus gathered the first disciples together, Jesus didn't look for like-minded people. Jesus chose disciples from a wide range of places and cultures and mindsets and occupations, rowdy fishermen, devout Jews, tax collectors, sicarii, Greek, those from within and those without the system. In everyday life, these folks would not have gotten along. They probably would have never spoken to one another, let alone spent time with one another. And yet Jesus taught them to become a team to respect each other, to place their minds and hearts on something higher than their political affiliations or their economic status or their judgments or their cultures. Loving God's people. That's what we're called to do, is just love God's people. It's so simple. In three years, Jesus transformed that motley crew into the power of love that would build a church and heal multitudes. Have you ever made your own salad dressing? I have. To do that, you take oil and vinegar and water and spices and perhaps some lemon juice or orange juice and maybe some other ingredients, but you shake it all together and you blend it so that it makes a unique dressing. Our church is just like that. You take people from all walks of life, all ranges of ideas, and we, we put them together and we shake things up. And the more you shake things up, the more diverse and creative ideas come forth, the more power of love the church has. I need your power of love. I need your diversity. Whoever is listening to this right now, my church needs you. I need your ideas, your creativity, your spirit, your thoughts. It takes a unique blend to do the work of Christ in the world in new and unique ways. And our times are calling for new and unique ways to make God's love known. It takes continually adding and trying new ingredients and bringing new ideas and new people 
in order to serve the tastes and reach everyone. Paul became Jesus' best evangelist, not because he parroted what Jesus said, but because Paul dared to try to live out what Jesus said. Building a church modeled on Jesus' ideas of extreme diversity and universal love and inclusion. And Paul succeeded. He wasn't perfect, but he succeeded in creating something pretty awesome. The church is not perfect. No church is. And like oil and water, we constantly need to strive to put on Christ and love the way Jesus wanted us to love, be willing to get shook up a little bit, it's okay. With determination and energy and commitment and intention, the power of love then is poured forth. And when we do, we will find ourselves inside the power of love, living the kind of life that we never dreamed could be true. So wake up, people of God. Wake up. Power of love. stop sleeping and to reinvent the church, our church. This place where everyone is welcome, accepted, loved, and where joy is found and innovation flourishes. Amen.
our amazing, wonderful, incredibly inclusive, loving God simply keeps reaching down into the dirt of humanity and resurrecting us from the graves that we dig for ourselves through our violence, through our lies, our selfishness, our arrogance, our addictions. And yet God keeps loving us back to life over and over again. Let us take a few moments of silent reflection, allow God to remove anything that keeps you from communion with the holy, from communion with creation, or from communion with your brothers and sisters. God, you are always as close as our elbow. Help us to keep reaching out for your love, for your spirit. May it energize us again, God, that we speak love to our own family, to our people, all of your people. Holy One, wrap us in the Spirit's tether as together we pray in the manner Jesus taught his own disciples to pray. Our Creator in heaven and all around us, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now the good news of Jesus the Christ. No matter where you've been on your journey, where you find yourself right now, or where you think you might be headed, our God is a God of love and forgiveness who runs to meet you with open arms. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God, and ain't that wonderful good news. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took blood, bread, blessed it, broke it, and offered it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus lifted the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and offered it to his friends, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my love, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, Remember me, Holy One. May we remember you in these simple moments. Whatever morsel, whatever liquid we have in front of us, we ask your blessings upon it. May we remember you not only in this moment, but in every moment in which we partake of morsels and liquid. May your blessings be upon it, Holy One. May we remember the essence of your message of good news, of love, love conveyed in so many and simple ways. We ask your blessing. Even if we don't understand how it works, we just ask your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. This is an open table. All are welcome to receive what God has to offer you here today. You are receiving at home, you are invited to partake and know that your offering given to God is blessed. Let us receive.
God, we have had the privilege to dine with you again. May we never dine without you. Thank you for this special meal. And we ask your blessings not only upon this meal, but upon everything that comes after it. Be with us on our journey. We ask your blessings in the name of Jesus, the joy giver. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able for our closing hymn. So in case you've forgotten, this is the first Sunday of the month, right? So we honor September birthdays, anniversaries, and anniversaries of sobriety, other special days you're celebrating during September. If you're here, please come forward or stand where you're at, actually, for a blessing. And uh, those of you online, please let, let us know your special blessing, and I will honor those uh, with this prayer and also recognize you in a later time. Uh, PJ. It is my 47th birthday on September 17th. Woohoo! 47th birthday. Do we have any other Septembers in the house? Okay, 
So for mm. PJ and for all those online with September special days, we extend to you our hand in a sign of blessing and we pray for you. Holy One, thank you for these special journeys. We pray that you would bless them in their celebrations, bless them at their low moments, remind them that this journey is their journey and your journey for you walk with them. Bring them your joy in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we have a special presentation to make. And yes, we do. And I'm going to ask Mona to kind of introduce it. present the 2020 Robert Darst Award for Outstanding Service to Metropolitan Community Church of the Quad Cities to Wendy Bingo Panzer. A lot of people don't realize how much she does for this congregation, but one of the main things that Bingo does is every year, throughout the year, she collects prizes and awards for our uh, silent auction for the Chili Cook-Off. And so we are never short of wonderful, wonderful offerings for our silent and live auctions at the Chili Cook-Off. And again, so thank you, Bingo. Uh, please join me in the benediction. Go out in love, reconcile to one another in Christ. Lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Live honorably, fulfilling the law through the love for all. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Yay, Jesus! Since we got a new number. <laughs> <laughs> 